for me, I'm not scared. If, if, even if I get one billion, I always tell people, even if I get one billion right now, mm. I cannot buy cars for my tour company. Mm -hmm. I cannot buy cattle to put in the farm. I breed goats because I love it and I know how to do it. Today we visited Amigo Farm Limited, which is a goat breeding farm located in Chirohora district, Uganda. They majorly focus on breeding South African boa goats. Amir, the director of Amigo Farm, who is ready to take us through his one acre goat project, is very ambitious about it and is ready to share with us how he's going to raise 50 goats in just one acre so if you are struggling out there with land and you don't know and wondering how to start this is a video for you so as you see here this is a walkway for people who will be entering in at the demo farm not to step on the grass uh, not only uh, destroying the grass, but even bringing in the disease. Uh, yeah, we we did this just to make sure that the, our feeds are safe. Are safe enough. Yeah. yeah. This, guys, whenever I tell you guys that when you put focus, passion to something and you have self-drive to do something, it's something that really becomes easy for you out there. So for Amil to really have this idea of one acre farm, and demonstration farm for farmers out there who are always you know at the age or maybe not sure yet if they can start and you have small pieces of land this is something that is really amazing and you know what amazing thing that i've really learned from here you planted your grasses before before yeah, yeah, yeah. the demo farm is yeah, yeah. open i did yes the florist is right here guys he's already planted it right here then also has other grasses that you're going to plant right are you going to subdivide these ones or you're just going to leave the chloris garden? Oh, no, I'm going to leave, as you see, chloris, chloris. Mm. Then I'm going to plant uh, sugar napia in okay. the boundary oh. all through. Uh, yeah, I left a space for uh, sugar napia and uh, other feeds. Other feeds yeah, for yeah. So this is going to hold up to 50 Yes, goats. it's one acre that is going to hold 50 goats. So let's talk about the cost of like fencing, how you sourced these poles right here. Wasn't it very expensive? Well, it was expensive indeed, but uh, when you uh, put uh, a lot in something, is mm -hmm. what you get. True. This is not something temporary. It will be here for years. So using the, uh, that wire and the treated poles, mm. I know that it will take me for over 10 years. Are you for real? Yeah. These poles are going to take you up to 10 yes, years. Yes, yes. More than 10 years. More than 10 years. Yes, because I have, uh, I know it and I've seen farms that uh, have used I've this. Used it. Yeah. So you, can see, you can see the difference of uh, non treated poles. Yeah. This the, one, termites the, the termites are already eating yeah, them up, as you can yeah. see from the Yeah. But I did this intentionally because mm. I want to plant trees that will make fence by the time these uh, poles get spoiled, mm. the trees are already up. Like a natural boundary. Exactly. Right there. Yeah. But I'm really super excited, guys. Let's go check what is happening that other side. Because this is one of the kind that I've never really seen. Someone doing like one acre kind of... Because those are one of the questions that we receive on daily about land, about, you know, small pieces of land and someone wants to start. So this is something that you can definitely come and learn. When do you think the project is going to be? Oh, uh, well... Um, I'm just waiting for these builders. Maybe builders. Mm. in the next, uh, I can give it up to six months. Six months. And people will come From here. now, yes. They'll be coming here. Because this was, uh, I was inspired by questions uh, that I got from people asking, uh, Amir, I like your goats and mm -hmm. I want to <laughs> start. I want to start, but I don't have enough land. I asked them, how much land do you have? How many goats do you want? I want like 10. How much land do you have? I have two acres. 
I tell them you can have 50, 50 goats on one acre. They say it's impossible. Mm -hmm. So instead of uh, saying it out of, uh, of my mouth, I decided to do it practically and to let people come see what I meant. What you meant. Yeah. And of course most people think like in an acre you can only do zero grazing, which is not the case. It's yet. not the case. You can see this. Guys, let's go and see what is happening on the other side. In our village here, actually uh, the district as whole, well, mm. we have very few people, maybe 1% out of 100, who knows about what goat farming God is. Family. You tell someone that you bought a buck at 5.5, they are. Really? Mm. Not How? It's not, it's not, it's not, uh -huh. they cannot understand you until you sit them down and explain to them. Still, they will not understand. But, uh, uh, gradually they will understand, they will understand, they will understand yeah. and uh, join us because for me my market is, I don't remember selling any goat of mine in my area. In your area. That's what I you're sell in the central region, east, north, southern Sudan and Kenya. Those are my markets. Uh, yeah, but uh, I'm sure we are going to... To really sell the idea to yes. as well and when they see that you're successful, something is doing is being done right here yeah. they will get the idea sure, sure. So we always tell people I, i'm sorry to bash my fellow ugandans we like to be more of followers in so many things in businesses and all that so like in your region right here where people have the mindset of ah for us cows this region is for only cows when they see that you're really progressing so much with the goats and with the breeds that you're really putting out here you will tell me in the next two years when the thing, when everything is open, sure. why everyone is opening up a goat farm That's around true. the whole region. Yeah, so but uh, that is exciting. Yeah, thank you. Uh, before before I, uh, I decided to fence off, uh, I planted Chloris Guyana. Yeah. This grass grew within uh, three months, and I harvested. So Already? this is yeah yeah. yeah. This mm, this is my first hay. Can you imagine, guys? <laughs> For the beginning, uh, I'm going to start with this, and I have uh, an order from uh, Naro okay. in Imbarara that I made for for silage, one ton for the beginning. Actually, they are waiting for me to come and get oh, it. Get it yeah. One ton. Yeah. So by the time I bring the animals here, mm -hmm. I don't want to suffer with uh, feeds. with feeds. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's so this is the house as you see it. It's mm. open. It's good for the hay. It needs uh, aeration and it's good when it's dry. When it's time to feed the animals, mm. you just chop them using the silage cutter. Mm. And uh, I add either microbes or or moras. Yeah, it will be good to go for the animals. Yeah. Guys, this is just work in progress. But you can so see the effort that he has really put into this. The bells are here ready. The structure is here ready for them. Of course, you've already seen how the goat house is going to look like. It's already raised, by the way. He is doing a raised goat house right here. Could you advise anyone out there who could be not knowing about any raised goat house? Uh, Why you decided on that? Raised goat house are the best. Uh, though other farmers discourage uh, uh, upcoming farmers because mm. of the costs. Mm. As I've told you, for me, I do something thorough. I don't do something temporarily. This house looks temporary because it, that's how it's supposed, it's to, supposed be. to be. But uh, when it comes to like where my animals are staying, I have to do something permanent. You can see even from, uh, mm. from here, mm. the base, yeah. the poles I use, mm. they can never get destroyed. Exactly. These they, are ca all strong. they can never get destroyed. Timber. The timber I use here, it can never get destroyed. So I don't do some, so, something that uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have to change within a year. Within a year. The good thing about raised go, uh, pens, it's, uh, you know these goats mm. are the cleanest animals I think I've ever that met. That is true, that is true. They don't want to sleep in anything mm. that is dirty. Yes. So uh, when, the, when, the, when the pen is not raised, they will definitely sleep in the urine. They don't like that. And it 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 uh, it will bring in the smell. The bad smell will definitely yeah. come. Then the ammonia. The ammonia and other diseases will come. You, 
you find maggots everywhere so oh, yeah. i i prefer a raised uh, house because of uh, hygiene mm. for the animals mm. and i encourage other farmers to do the same because if you take your time do something that is right that is right don't panic do something that is right at the right time exactly yeah visit other farms do your research as he, he has really emphasized that and we always emphasize this guys do not just rush because you have your money and you're seeing maybe amigo farms is doing i have to also start immediately yet you're not prepared you're not ready you're going to you know crash i saw something that other side is that the like the water source no this okay. is a every, uh, uh, the caretaker will be staying here okay. so that is a uh, pit latrine is the water going to be coming here? Uh, I'm, I want to build a tank there okay. of uh, 20,000 liters. Okay, around here? Yes, down there. Mm. You see how this one is uh, roofed? Yeah. It will be the same. I want I wanted to do it this way bec uh, because I want the harvest, the water harvest. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's amazing. As long as you have a farm, keeping workers motivated is really key. So, we also asked Amir how he does it at his farm. First of all, you see these workers, when you know that you have a project mm. that brings in money, mm. check this person as your brother, your sister, your friend, mm. you know, feel, feel, let them feel comfortable with you. When you come once in a while, if you <laughs> if you buy a sword and sit with them and you eat share with them yes make them feel like they're part of you, they are part of you and uh, mm. you know you make all those funny funny stories when you go back they say i will not go i will not, not get go. such Someone a such a boss like, like this. this so that's the tactic i use and i give them some allowances allowances yeah if when i come for a week when before i leave Mm. I give not so much, like mm. 20,000, yeah, and the worker something. will be very happy. So Amigo, I wanted also to ask you about this. Was this intentional? You left some trees here. Is well, it going to act like shed or you're going to approach them? I found this a uh, appropriate place for this project mm. because, of, uh, because of it being on the hill yes. and surrounded by, by home. Yeah. I realized the other side would be far for, for us to to supervise. Mm. So the trees were there already yeah. and it was a blessing. Mm. So you're going to leave them a there shed. as a shed. Because yeah. uh, when you cut this uh, this grass, it's, mm. it's, uh, it's advised to let it uh, dry from the shed. Yeah, true. And you maybe you take it after one day other, other than displaying it on the uh, direct sunlight. Okay. Yeah. So I'll use the trees for that. Wow, yeah. that is really amazing. I don't know what you have to s tell our viewers out there. Like the last words about this one acre project for someone who is thinking about doing it or maybe them coming here. Any piece of advice you can tell them, really? My advice is don't fear to start. Start with what you have. And uh, what I emphasize and advise, if you are a starter, don't start with pure breeds don't start with hybrids they will uh, they may you may face challenges start with locals learn from there if you don't if you no longer want them sell them away and bring in the animals that you want, that you want. when you know what you're doing don't jump from a to x from a to z no start from a then go to b that's when you'll be successful People see my animals and they admire them, yeah, but I, nice. I went through a process. I started with local goats. Mm -hmm. I, I crossbred. Then when I realized that I'm safe and comfortable with having pure breeds, I brought them. That's why I never had any challenges, any with, challenges them. with them. So I knew what I was doing. Yeah. Start small uh, with what you have. Don't look at uh, if you have a, if you if you if you have enough money, it is okay. You it's can okay. start with a, mm. uh, with a, with a bigger number of animals and. Uh, but you know what we always tell people who want to. You know, people have their money. You invest on too many goats. You don't know what you're going to be doing. 
Do you know the frustration you're going to get when you start like that? It's better for you to go gradually even if you have your money you so that you go steady. You can't manage when you start any business. Mm. You can't put, you can't test water with the two legs. Yes. You have to first put in mm -hmm. and see how it works. <laughs> how it is. Then you get into it. Full you get time. into it full time. For me, I'm not scared. Even if, even if I get one billion, I always tell people, even if I get one billion right now, mm. I cannot buy cars for my tour company. Mm -hmm. I cannot buy cattle to put in the farm. I breed goats because I love it and I know how to do it. Wow, that yeah. is amazing. I don't know what you guys have really got from this video, but I think it is something to learn, really. Farmers out there, in case you really want to do goat farming, in case you want to do maybe any other kind of farming at your farm, you've listened to him, he has given you advice, I hope you really take it as well. But we really appreciate you so much for sharing this amazing project. I know he is inviting us to come here when it's officially open. Yeah. We shall definitely bring you guys back we shall, so that you see we shall, exactly we shall, when the building is done. We shall have a roast, uh, nyamachoma <laughs> and maybe some fireworks. <laughs> that is so nice. Mm -hmm. We shall be displaying the fireworks mm -hmm. up in the hills here. Guys, the beauty from this farm, I don't know. Shiruhura is just a beautiful region. A beautiful district. Thank you know, you. it's my first time coming this side, but the hills, now I can understand. This is the land of milk and honey. Yeah? It is. <laughs> <laughs> milk and honey here in Chiruhura. It's really amazing. And guys, when the farm is open officially, we shall definitely tell you guys to come here and also share his contacts, share his platform so that you can definitely plan your visits to the farm. But really appreciate you guys so, so much. If you haven't already checked our social media platform, we have Instagram, Value Farm, UG, Facebook, Value Farm, TikTok, Value Farm. Please go see behind the scenes and also see what we are doing currently at the farm. See you. Bye. Bye.